welcome back and today we're going to be talking about something that no one really talks about that much but it's the comparison between Generation X and Generation Y. If you don't know what each are, Generation X consists of the people who were born in the early 1960s to the late 80s. And Generation Y is basically teenagers like us, born from the late 80s to the early 2000s. So recently, I have read an article about this girl who wrote a letter to the New York Times or some newspaper company. So basically what she wrote in that letter is to show that these newspapers that teenagers aren't teenagers like before. And I'll leave the link down below so you can see it yourself. So some key points that she points out is that we have seen more than they have before. We've gone through a lot and we had to mature much more faster than teenagers back then. To better understand our world, we need to understand each generation and how we can learn how to coexist with H. So let's start with Generation X. These people are basically the parents and adults and people in their early 50s today. People have seen the effects of the Great Depression and World War II. Not only did they see the effects of that, but they had to live in constant fear of being nuked by nuclear bombs during the Cold War. This was also a period of time where the Vietnam War was televised, and this was the first time ever that a war has been televised. And this, of course, has brought up a lot of outbringings and made society angry. Not only did they have that, but there was also the civil rights movements for African Americans and also the spread of feminism. There was also the rise of STDs and no cure to find it. So as you can tell, this period of time was not that easy to live in. There was a lot of prejudices and discrimination against people with different sexual orientation, race, and gender. Of course, these people had to put their amount of trust into the government and let them take care of everything. But if they did not like anything that's going on in the government, they went on protests and marches. And there were no Facebook updates. They had to trust the people around them to make a change in the nation. Being happy was very difficult back then, but they trusted that society will allow them happiness if they finish high school, go to college, and get a job with benefits. Of course, going the right path seemed very promising, but as the years progressed on, we realized that men in 2007 made less 12% than their fathers in 1947. Despite having a good degree and the required job skills, there was no job security. There was a lot of cutbacks on staff, wages, and so much more that going the right way isn't the most promising way for Generation X. However, Generation X is also the generation with the best social skills. It could talk to someone without getting bored because one, they had great attention spans, and two, they did not have phones. Simple. If you wanted to get to know a person, you had to talk to them, you had to communicate with them, you had to flirt with them or if you if were into that stuff. You had to find their number on the yellow pages to see if they are interested in getting a soda pop later or something. Talking consisted of human con communication. What we have today is internet, Instagram, Twitter. Look at a person's eyes and make conversation and try to make the conversation keep going and that's great because it's what makes us human. Now today we have the security of being behind a screen without being afraid of saying what we want to say because we trust our phones, our computers more than we trust each other. Generation X also has the ability to be able to talk to a person's face. As in, if something's bothering them, they would have the courage to say it to their faces. But now, a simple subtweet will do and that will hurt a person because the fact that you can't say it to their face is not human anymore. And we are becoming more and more like our phones. We are losing the human spirit. And we have grown up too much. We have seen things that they have never seen in the sense that we are able to find these things online faster than they can. We are more understanding of other people than this generation was. If we wanted to know something, we would ask the adults because that's the right thing to do. But in some cases, they don't tell us what we want to know. So we go online, of course, we find information, we learn faster, so we become more mature. As we become more mature, we become more cynical towards people because we see the bad things of the world faster. We get anxiety more than 
psychiatric patients in the 50s and that's really sad because we may be the first generation to die before our parents. As we become more mature, we become more understanding and we become less discriminating against any people of co different color, different race, different sexual orientation. Nonetheless, we are becoming more understanding. Something in the world that is going on, we like to spread news. We spread news faster than it was before. Sometimes the news can be false, but nonetheless, we like to care. We care about what goes on in the world. Even though we are spreading it through Facebook or tweets, it's not really doing anything, but we are spreading information, which is a good thing because spreading information back then was so limited, they did not have internet access. Prices of college is going way too high. So as we start becoming reluctant of going to college because we see these people who did graduate from college but their debt keeps piling and piling onto their backs and it becomes impossible for them to pay off. We also see that even though you have a good degree, you can't be guaranteed job security. I'm not saying going to college is unnecessary, but I believe to, you have to continue learning whether it's through college or through people or through traveling. It does not matter. You need to keep learning no matter where you are. To end this video off, it's not a matter of which generation is better or which generation has it harder, but we need to understand how each generation views the world and we need to be understanding of each generation because X or Y, we are all people. The previous generation should not use their upbringings to scold us or rebuke us because of their hardships. And we should be able to explain to them why we feel this way and why we act this way. We act like this because we are taught to speak up for what is right. And we don't intend to be disrespectful. We just intend to tell you what we think. And what we think may not always be the way you think. Not everyone can think the same way, but we have evolved. We have become more mature than teenagers before, and we are becoming more understanding than the previous generation. By better understanding each other, we have a better understanding of the world, and we can be able to live and coexist with one another. I'm going to be holding this camera because I want to. Okay, so, um, so that's my opinion about Generation X and Generation Y, and you should be able to use this video as a reference of why people act a certain way. So I'll see you guys later, maybe next week, maybe next time. And I feel like I am um, not really good at these videos things. But if you want, you can leave a comment below or send an ask on my Tumblr down below if I should talk about a certain topic next week or next month, whatever. If you guys want it, and then you'll get it. Oh yeah, Tarts Party. Like, the lighting is so bad, I'm so sorry. Cry drips the kills. Kills the kills the kills!